Hello and thank you for joining us on this edition of NHK Newsline. It's now 5 a.m. on Wednesday, May 16th. I'm Raja Padan in Tokyo. We begin this hour on the Korean Peninsula, where North Korea has announced it will suspend its high-level talks with the South, scheduled for Wednesday. The talks between Seoul and Pyongyang were the first to take place since the inter-Korean summit on April 27th. North Korean state-run media says the country has no choice but to suspend the talks with the South due to the ongoing U.S.-South Korean military exercises that went against the trend of warming inter-Korean ties. The meeting was due to focus on plans to implement the declaration from the summit, including promises to formally end the Korean War and seek complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. And we will be bringing you more details as we get more information. U.S. researchers say they've detected evidence that Pyongyang has begun dismantling its nuclear test site less than a month before President Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un meet in Singapore. Analysts at Johns Hopkins University say satellite images taken on May 7th show buildings near the nuclear facility have been destroyed. That's where five of the past six nuclear tests were conducted. Another image shows two key buildings, including what looked like an engineering office and a compressor building, have also been demolished. On Saturday, North Korea invited the United States and other foreign media to observe the final dismantling of its facilities set to take place between May 23rd and 25th. The U.S. has said Pyongyang must commit to complete and irreversible denuclearization before it lifts sanctions and provides financial assistance. The head of the U.N. Food Agency is appealing for international support for children in North Korea. He says the situation isn't as bad as in the 1990s when people were starving, but children are malnourished. David Beasley is the executive director of the World Food Program. He visited North Korea earlier this month and said not enough food is being produced due to floods and droughts. Beasley pointed out the level of international aid to the North has plunged. No child should suffer the consequences of political decisions. And so it is our belief that every child in DPRK has the same right as any child around the world. He met the North's ceremonial head of state, Kim Yong-nam, during his four-day visit. Beasley said he saw a genuine desire among North Koreans to be more open and engage in frank and candid discussions. Senior officials from North Korea are touring industrial and agricultural facilities in China. Diplomatic sources say Pyongyang is making a bid to persuade Beijing to ease sanctions and improve economic ties. The delegation from Pyongyang includes the vice chairman of the Workers' Party's Central Committee. The group visited an agricultural research facility as well as the Chinese Academy of Sciences. It's believed they're also set to make a study tour of rural economies. Japan's foreign ministry says the country has been facing its harshest post-war security environment, pointing to North Korea's nuclear and missile development. It says Japan should work with the United States and South Korea to make sure the North denuclearizes completely. The ministry presented its annual report on Tuesday to Japan's cabinet. The report refers to next month's historic meeting between the American and North Korean leaders. It says Japan, the U.S. and South Korea should push Pyongyang to abandon its weapons of mass destruction and its ballistic missiles. The report highlights Japan's efforts to monitor the suspected transfers of goods between North Korean and foreign vessels. The transfers violate U.N. Security Council resolutions. The government's top priority remains the abduction issue. It says at least 17 of its citizens were abducted by North Korean agents during the 1970s and 80s. The report says Japan should work with South Korea and the U.S. to resolve the issue. And even with the current move of, of rapprochement around the Korean peninsula, Japan's defense ministry is scouting locations for a new land-based missile defense system. It's meant to defend against possible North Korean missile attacks. The government plans to install two American-made Aegis Ashore units by fiscal 2023. It's similar to a missile defense system Japan already has on its maritime destroyers. Japan's defense minister says he'll soon send senior officials to discuss the possible environmental impact with local governments. Akita Prefecture in the north and Yamaguchi Prefecture in the west are being considered as locations for deployment.